On today's episode of Help I Sexted My Boss, Jordan's gone country and western. Yeah! Woo! There's an unfortunate nickname for a Japanese fruit. Lots of chat about cruising. It's a regular episode. And we talk about planning a wank when your partner's away. If you like this episode of Help I Sexted My Boss, don't forget to share it with your friends, comment, like us, spread us about. Thank you. Can I just say I'm feeling very butch after last night? Are you? Yeah. Thank you <laughs> for my first ever experience of that. It surely wasn't your first. It was, yeah. Yeah. It was good, though. It, you it, must have growing up done it. No, no. It, it, it was a bit painful to start with. Yes, I, I, could, I, could, I could sense you tensing up next yeah. to me. But, um, but you soon eased into it. I soon eased into it, yeah. Hello and welcome to Help I Sex and My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like, is it okay to send someone a late birthday card and blame it on the postal service? Oh, don't kick them while they're down. Oh, no, absolutely. don't do Absolutely, absolutely. And how do I manifest a salt burn summer? Oh, I'd love a salt burn summer. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> and what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? But we are not to your usual agony ants, are we, William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert and internet sensation. <laughs> no, we're not Jordan North. I'm more Candelabra. <laughs> I'm more Candelabra. You're more Can of Lager. That's nice. It's from Ella. Very Thank good. You. Let's uh, let's have a toast. Although I'm still on. Are you still? Yeah. yeah. I'm, this is my. I'm still on dry jam. Last week of it. Uh, yeah. I met. Um, I met our mutual friend J Ro, James oh, Robinson, yes. for a, for a coffee this week. For a coffee, and it was so awkward because we've been mates for years, and we're just like, so yeah, how's Chelsea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were like, literally ten minutes in, James was like, this is so weird us two meeting and not having a beer. But that's that's one of the things with Northerners because James is from the north, from the Lake District. Alcohol is a great bond, yes. really, for Northerners, and yes. without that, you've got nothing. Yeah, we, we were like, this is boring. So. I might break it on Saturday at okay. the time of recording because... Um, You're going to the football? No, I'm going to the football on Friday. Oh, okay. Yeah. And football on a Friday? Well, it's, I'm going to watch it on the telly because I can't get up in time. But I said to James, we might, we might go and have a little boozy Saturday afternoon. Am I just toasting on my own then? Yeah, because it's bad luck toasting water. And I, I it's to, not. There's someone I wanted to toast to this week, someone who's died. Um, oh, I know who it was. They've not died. Is it out there yet? <laughs> You're right. You know what I mean? Yeah, we can't do that. Yet. Oh, is it not no, official? I don't yet. think they've announced. Okay. No. I would like to toast, however, G and Diva Rodolfo Joaquin Perez Arche. Is that him from the Joker? <laughs> Potentially, I have uh, Rodolfo said all of your names incorrectly. He is from Shock Chile, and he has got us tattooed on his calf. Matt! Have you seen this? The, and on the screens in the studio behind us, and we'll put this on social media, is a picture of this Chilean man's leg um, in great detail, actually. And there's me. I'm on the top. Why have and we no eyes? I don't... We look like Pokemon characters. We do. And what does it say, Jordan? More BFF, more WTF. Yes, which I think is um, from our book. It's, it's within one of the section openers. What's that, that above his sock? Is that a birthmark? It could be the Japanese flag. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Could be. Um, or a, a rising sun. That was sent into my family WhatsApp group. Was it? And my mum was really proud. Was she? She said, you know you've made it when someone's got a tattoo of your face on you. It's lovely when you've got your face pressed against a Chilean man's leg, isn't it? Yes, it, it is. Yeah. It's lovely. And now we have. So, Rodolfo. Rodolfo. Tattoos are still common, but they're slightly less common if they involve us. Rodolfo. Rodolfo, the tattoo Chilean. <laughs> <laughs> he got a tattoo on his leg, <laughs> and if you say it's shiny, he will. Rodolph the tattoo <laughs> Chilean. <laughs> he, I'll work on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come back to us. Um, he drew the design himself. Really? He didn't get an artist to do that. I mean, quite obvious when you look at it. But he he drew that himself. Don't be horrible. What? <laughs> anyway, it's um, lovely. Maybe he could colour us in next year because it's a black and white tattoo. No, don't colour it. It's hard to maintain coloured in tattoos. Oh, is it? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've never thought about that. Yeah. Well, he's got his red Japanese flag one he's going to have to do and he's got a star on his knee by the look of it. 
we should talk about last night. Go on then. We um we went to Panto. We did. Oh, yes, we did. <laughs> at the Palladium. Uh, I met William and Stuart yes. after work. And we, we went to watch Julie and Clary in Panto. Julie and Clary, who makes William look like a <laughs> pint drinking fat ass plumber. How rude. He he makes you look butch. In his own words, he's a renowned homosexual. No, no offense to any pint drinking fat ass plumbers. That's no. Non, non, That's no your f- demographic. It, it very much so is. <laughs> but um it was it was great fun. It Jennifer was Jennifer Saunders as Jennifer Hook. Saunders was brilliant. Um much it, better in Act Two than Act One. Nigel Havers yes. was great. It was very fun, very camp. Yeah. You see, I don't think it was camp. I think that's just very normal. I, I, I thought, and I've not been to Panto in ages. I, and it made me want to do Panto. I've been asked a couple well, of times. Well, give it time. And no, I've been asked a few times. And I was like, I can't because of the radio. But I was like, well, could be. You, you said you got asked to do it when you were on Rock FM. Yeah, I got asked to do it in, uh, in Preston. I think it was Cinderella. And I remember the most famous one was the guy who played Young Kenny in Phoenix Nights. Right. He was in it. Um, is there any particular pantomime? I mean, I love this. We're mid into January. We're talking about pantomime. But is there any uh, particular role that you'd like? I could see myself as buttons. As buttons? Because mm. because you press buttons for a living. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. But it also made me nervous last night watching pantomime because we are actually playing the Palladium. Yeah. So what, it was a work trip that we went to the Palladium pantomime. Anyone from HMRC is listening. <laughs> and... Um, we went to go and just see the Palladium because obviously that's where we'll be going on our tour in May, as well as lots of other wonderful theatres. So venues. nervous. I'm so nervous. Yeah. It's a big old stage, isn't it? It is. What are we going to do? And it's got all those different tiers. I mean, the good news is, I think the, the Royal Circle and the Upper Circle, that will predominantly just be your guest list. Yeah. So we're really only selling the, the stalls. Yeah. Genuinely, probably. Manchester, I'm worried about because I think half of it's probably my guest list. I've seen the list and it is. Sorry about that. No, no, it's fine. They better laugh. Uh, oh, they will. They will. We'll warm up. So, yeah, we went to Panto. What else has been going on? How's well, your week been? How's your dry January going? Like I said... Like, it's tough. It is tough. And um, it, it's it's fine. I get it. And, but I do, I do like a drink. But I'm, mm. I'm, I'm resetting. Um, and... And do you think a two-week reset is enough? Yeah. It's just... It's, it's just a bit... A bit boring, isn't it? And are you healthy eating? Yeah, I'm trying to be pretty healthy. I've got Hello Fresh, haven't I? I've got meatballs and mash tonight. Meatballs and mash. I don't know what I'm doing. Mike is going out to the theatre tonight. We're sort of. I was out last night. He's out tonight. It's it's fine because I don't drink in the week, and I, I, I love being in routine. But weekends, I'm just like, <laughs> I I I am though looking forward to this weekend because um, I've ordered a darts board. Oh, how common! So I'm probably just going to play darts all weekend. I've got a darts stand. Where are you putting that? So it's, it's on a stand, so it's like you can take it up and okay. down. And then I'm, so I'm, you can get rid of it. When I'm hoping to be around. semi-pro by the end of the year. Semi-pro? Yeah. I was a good darts player in my day, you know. Well, well it's all that wrist action. 2009, yes. Sir Tom Finney final. Mm. Yeah, the pub I used to work in. Me and Airy John were in semi-final. Okay. Right. And it went to last leg. And it were like got a bit of a crowd going. And I think there were about 200 quid prize money. Mm. And Airy John beat me on last leg. Okay. And um, he split, no way to talk about your brother. He split the winnings with me. Bless him. Oh. Oh, he split them. What were the winnings? I think I got about 100 quid. 100 quid? Yeah, when I was about 19. Bless him. Buy you a house. I thought it might have been 20. He gave me a bit of money from it anyway. Oh. But yeah. Um, and so which room, I'm not talking about your house, but which room are you putting that in? The study. In the st- yeah, okay. The That's probably where I'd put it. How much distance do you need? Is there like a regulation 2. distance? 2.6 metres or something. There is. Yeah. So I've ordered me darts. I'm just waiting for the dart stand to come. Yeah. I had to pull a lot of strings to get that. I bet you did. <laughs> well, be that. careful where you don't, you don't holes in the wall. That's right. I've got a little case to go around it as well. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Mm. Yeah, because those they're sharp, those darts. I actually looked at the end of one a few weeks ago and actually realised it's got a real pin i don't know what yeah they no they're it. really yeah. sharp i was once playing for a church for a charity i got triple 20 triple 20 so you're playing for a church yeah and i, I was in the final got triple 20 yes triple 20 third dart bounced out hit a nun in the <gasps> eye i got one nun dead in 80 oh god you've done that joke before <laughs> i'm here all week <laughs> have you ever played darts no why don't you come around this weekend and have a game of darts i'm busy oh yeah <laughs> 
very busy. I, I will tell you what, I will come around. We'll do, maybe we'll do, you know, like when um, we did QE2, Keep Up Appearances Night. And yeah. We just had a takeaway and obviously Ben's not here, but I'll come around and we'll play darts. Okay. You can teach me. Stuart, have you ever played darts? No? Okay. No. Adam, have you ever played darts? Yeah. yeah, of course you have. Yeah. But dry jam's fine. Good. I just, I made me realise, like, I'm just going to counter actually There's a lot of stuff out at the moment about being sober and how good it is for you. My, my skin does look great because this has been like 10 days without mm. drink. Um, I've not got a problem. But also, like, it is fine if you enjoy a drink. It is fine if you work hard and you, you like to have a tipple in moderation at the weekend or if you've had a hard day. It's it's fine. And I do. I, li I, like, I like eating. I like drinking. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Talking of um, talking of eating, last night when I did come home, Mike had gone to bed, but he did what he always does when I'm not there. He had fish. Oh, does he cook fish when you're out? Because you I hate don't like it. fish. Nothing fishy touches my lips. And I came home, and it was like the girls' boarding house at school when I walked in the door. Oh my god! <laughs> Literally, I I was choking, and not not in a good way. It was awful. I had to open the windows. What I had to did light he have? A candle. Kippers. I don't know what he had. No. Uh, it was white because I remember seeing it. Halibut, sea bass. Halibut. Was it halibut? I think he's, it was a, halibut. he's a northern lad. A bit yeah. halibut. Yeah. Um, it was yeah vile. So I'm thinking of what I. I don't know if there's a smell he doesn't like, but whatever. If I can work that out between now and dinner, I'm going to cook it tonight. So when he comes back from Wicked, he's going to see some new theatre for a change. He can then have the same experience. Not like, like a passive aggressive marriage, is there? No. Keeps us together. So I love the fact that when you're out for the night, he goes, ooh, what can I do tonight? Because uh, most people, let's be honest, think, ooh, I'll have a right good wank today. Oh, well, they will when they're rubber sure, out, don't they? They'll think, oh, do you know what? I'll, have a proper, I'll plan a wank. He You'll thinks, plan a wank? Yeah, you know when you rubber ass out, you think, oh, Adam's laughing, he knows. <laughs> you, know, you, you think, oh, I've got afternoon to myself. I'm going to have a right good wank. He probably thought, oh. Can I ask, are you going to ask for this to be cut by the time this comes out? Probably. Do you just want to just think about what you're saying? <laughs> it's fine. But he thought, oh, William's out tonight. I know what I'll do. I'll have a bit of fish. Yes. Yeah. Says it all. Really? Well. How is he? I've not seen him for ages. Yes, expecting... he's fine. You'll see him at Nancy Pelosi weekend. Oh, yes. We're going away for that to write yes. the show. Well, hopefully. To come up with some ideas. Yes, to bounce off each other. How are your rowing classes oh, going? Oh, good God. So I've joined up to this, like, rowing gym class, mm. thinking I'll be fine. And I've actually still got really bad flashbacks of when I rowed from London to Burnley, which I said then I'll never do it. And I, I was on this rowing machine thinking mm. I'll be fine. And it, it was hell. I was, all I could hear was Katie Thistleton in the background, you know, because she was there, like, mm. commentating. Heard it back and going, his legs have gone, his legs have gone, he's, he's going, we're going to have to go to a song. And I was just, it was, it was horrible. And on this class, you're, how you're performing, because you put this thing around your body, like a monitor, like a strap, and it, it comes up on the big screen. And I was last in the class. You were last? So my heart rate, I didn't get out, I didn't get into the orange zone. And then out of everyone, I, I was last. And it's how far you, how far you push it. So, Gosh. yeah, I'm very, very January. Okay. Uh, mm. Well, keep going, I yeah. believe. Do you need sponsoring for your rowing class? No, I'm all good for that. No, you're Thank okay. You. Also, I don't know what's happening. And mm. I think subconsciously that's why I've wore this jumper today. Yes, it. tell us about this green Ralph Lauren jumper you're wearing. It's just a green jumper with the American flag on. It hasn't got all 50 stars on it. Has it not? No, that's quite an old version of the American flag. Oh, God. Oh, it's not that... Potentially what? it could be Confederate. It's not the Confederate, Confederate. flag, but I'm... I will look into that. Flag. Which leads me on to my next thing, and now I'm starting to get worried. I'm really into country music at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm proper into country music. So, we're what's playing... your favourite country song? So, we're playing this Zach Bryan song at the moment. I remember everything. Okay, it's mm -hmm. a beautiful song. So, I put it on on my streaming service. I can say Apple. Yeah. Uh, and I'll put it on on my streaming service, and then I start listening to other country songs. Really into it. Gosh. And, and there's there's like songs and like it really appeals to the working man and some of the lyrics and stuff. And I'm like, oh God, and there's this one song I absolutely love. Yes. Right? And it's like, working long hours for bullshit pay and earning a book and I'm on my way. And I'm like, oh God, this is really speaking to me as a working class chap myself. And what Hello, it's your employers. Um, so <laughs> this one guy, I've been listening to his songs and they've been like, I'm like, yeah, go fight the power. Looked him up. 
He's only part of the bloody MAGA crew, isn't he? Oh, well, it happens. Big Trump supporter. Yes. And I'm like, so I'm not, yeah. So, mm. as, yeah. Have you heard Carrie Underwood before he cheats? That's a good one. No. Yes. Oh, yes. Executive Chairman Emeritus Deluxe Stewart, whatever he's called, is, is nodding in agreement. I, I do think in another life it could have been a country singer. It's not that hard, is it? I woke up I... in the morning, tied down my horse. I went to work and I <laughs> got on the course. I went home and seen my wife and she was bitching at me about my life. You know, see, that was, wow. just, that was just riffing. I do think in another life I could be a country singer. Right. We're well, halfway there now. I'm working for bullshit pay. The boss said to me, are you gay? You know, something like that. <laughs> I can just, yeah. It's just... <laughs> I'm really, I could have been a country singer in I don't life. think many country songs relate to homosexuality in my a experience. Yeah. I'm sure there are some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, you'll be covering for Bob Harris next, won't you? Who? Oh, for God's sake. Oh, on Radio 2? Yes. So, yeah, in, 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 to summarise, I'm off the beer, I'm eating healthy, <laughs> I'm going to rowing classes and I'm really into country music. Wow. A yeah! Lovely. Cowboy. Well, in other news, I'm really turning into you. You're sort of maturing. You're sort of having a slight, you know, moment. Mm -hmm. I'm associating with the youth because last weekend I went to a 21st birthday party. Wow. And you're, how old are you now? 34. 30, I'm 34 next month. I, yeah, okay. Well, there how was, was me. How was it? I felt, I felt, well, I felt young to still be invited, but every other guest was predominantly 20. Or 21. And I felt like I should be on a register by the end of the wow. evening. And can I just say, even when William was 21, he didn't go to many 21st birthday parties, no. did you? <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm ageing back. I'm like Benjamin Button. Uh, but this was Viral Fred's yes. uh, 20th. Who 21st does all of William's uh, viral socials. sensation videos. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was great fun. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, yeah, everyone was just very young. Were they? And I sort of felt like I was, you know, the token old homosexual in the corner. At Freddie's party. Oh, oh the old, old homosexual. Old. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were well represented. Did they do shots? Did you do any shots? Uh, no. No, we had spotted dick. D d did yes. you actually? That was the pudding. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, I've rubbed off on Freddie. Okay. And I've uh, never had spotted dick. Have you not? No. Oh, we'll get you some. I don't think I have. It's just sort of suet. It's like a spongy... You got currants in? Yes. Yeah, I think I might. It's just Christmas pudding, isn't it? It's like a white Christmas pudding. I might have had it. It's quite nice. It's quite trad. Mm. Anyway, that was nice. Talking of trad. What is trad? Traditional. Oh, okay. Do you think I could wear a cape? So as like a, as a coat, like a cloak. Like the Jack the Ripper? Yes, because I've seen one I like. Okay. And I'd quite like to buy it. Right. But I'm just like, you know, you know, I've got my lovely long coat that I go for coat fittings for. Yeah. Or I went for coat fittings. There's a nice cloak. Okay, brilliant. It's a little bit sort of... Have you got a top hat? No. It's a bit Austrian. Please. But I think it would look beautiful in videos. Please and it, get It's it. very much a presence thing. Ha please get a cloak. Okay. Yeah, I think... Oh, I could wear it. If it comes in time, I could wear it to Nancy Pelosi, Alex Polizzi. I think if anyone can get away with a cloak, it's you. Like, yes. And like, it's just more... Like, when I'm out filming, it will be fine, because I'm obviously filming with Freddie or whatever. It's more just when I'm going to and from, I'm thinking, will people look at me and think I'm completely weird? Yes, but it, you'd absolutely suit it. Okay. Yeah. Which is funny, because... Don't laugh, but I'm... <laughs> I've been thinking, and I've... Oh, are you going to get one as well? No, I've been thinking of having a little neckerchief. A neckerchief? <laughs> a cravat? No, a little, you know, where you tie it round your neck? Yes. So I've been watching The Tourist. Oh, it's round your neck now, is it not your arms? And you know, Jamie Dornan. Yes, yeah, Jamie Dornan. He's, 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 he's got like a really little neckerchief on. I thought, oh, that looks pretty cool. Okay. So I'm thinking of maybe starting wearing neckerchiefs in the spring. You get a neckerchief, I'll get a cape. Okay. Yes. Yes. That we'll, panto will be coming thick and fast. We'll be like, Laurel and Hardy, please get a cape. <laughs> okay, please. I, will, I will after this. No capes, no capes. Cheers, Sarah. I Thanks. will order my cape. Will you actually? Yes. Can you, how much is it? Oh, it's quite expensive. I bet, I bet capes aren't cheap. No, because you, there aren't that many so that you can buy. So obviously demand is not high. I can imagine it being like... <laughs> 
I like that scene. <laughs> like that scene in Fools and Horses where Del Boy and Rodney are dressed up as Batman and Robin and the car breaks down <laughs> and they just come running down the street. Councillor Murray, that'll be you. <laughs> You'll be just walking down the street. It's not. It's it's a dark colour. It's not. It's not sort of you know shiny like Del Boy's. They'll think you're a vigilante. Yes, maybe. Oh, that's brilliant. Capes might be back in. I've always said that the police should go back to wearing capes. If you look at sort of the police from the, yes. sort of the turn of the century, turn of the 20th century, they were in little capes. What do the capes do? Do they keep you warm? Just keep you warm. How, though? They might not like a coat. You just wrap yourself up in it. You want to get one of those dry robes. They're good if you're filming and stuff. Dry Someone's robes. Someone's bloody tea-leafed mine. It's like a big, long coat with a towel in it. Oh, it's so good if you're filming. I, I, I got one for Saturday Night Takeaway. Oh, nice. And I don't know what I've done with it. I think someone's pinched it. We have to buy a new one for the new series. I will. Shall we go to Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week? Let's do it. If you like a chap who's cheeky and northern, you're in for a treat. With our Jordan, and if a giggle is what you seek, you're sure to love Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week. Cha-cha-cha. William gave me a book. A listener, one of the handwritten letters... A listener had sent us in, amongst some lovely other coasters and pens that this uh, listener wrote in. He's called Matthew. He also sent in this joke book. He sent in a joke book. Thank you, Matthew. And I was going to read one from it, but there is uh, a chapter in this joke book titled Ethnic. So, so we're not going to go near that book. I think we should um, avoid that one. Yeah, but thank you. You're all heart. I have written back to Matthew to say I'll, thank I'll you. stick to some that have been sent in by you, our Gene Divas. So this... instead, here's one from Nigel Farage. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Sammy Reed, who's uh, got a blue tick on Insta. Do we not? Oh, who doesn't now? Uh, it says, <clears throat> how are films Titanic and The Sixth Sense alike? And I'll tell you the punchline after the... Oh, do you know it? Yes. Oh. I see dead people. Oh, for so... God's sake. <laughs> I think well, you've I'm done have it. To find another one now. <laughs> oh, here we go. Two cannibals eating a clown. And I'll tell you the punchline after the break. Thank God. Thanks for sticking with us, Gene Divas. Um, it's now time for Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week. Two cannibals eating a clown. <laughs> one says to the other, Does this taste funny to you? <laughs> Don't roll your eyes, because I'm not, I'll keep going until I get a laugh. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. This is from Ryan Chadwick on Instagram. I was walking in the Olympic Village and noticed a man with a big long stick. And I said, <laughs> Oh, are you a pole vaulter? And he replied, No, I am German. And why do you know my name was Volta? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got a winner. Okay, are you very a pole good. Volter? I've laughed just to move on. There we go. Now, before we go to the listeners' questions and dilemmas, we have. A bit of bad news, Jordan. Oh, okay. We've had a two-star review on Apple Podcasts. Oh, God. Do you want to read what Marty Redshed said? Marty Redshed said uh, he doesn't like our one-trick pony innuendo jokes. Which is very rude. Yeah. Uh, but, but he must have liked them a bit because he gave us two stars and mm. thank God he didn't give us one. But um. So if you are listening now on Apple or Spotify, mm. please do leave us a five-star review to cancel out Marty's two-star review. Yeah. Maybe be leave a bit of an innuendo in the review. If you've listened yes, to us, he hates it. If you've listened to us for ages and never left us a review, please do it this week on Apple or, or Spotify. It's not like me and William read them at two o'clock in the morning. Well, I don't. So uh, if you are listening now and you would like to leave us a nice review, you no, know, you know what? We're not thin skinned. If you want to give us some feedback, something you're not happy with, maybe, yeah, leave us a review. We can we can take it, can't we? Yes, we can. You can take it. We can take it. Yes. You can take it. Yeah. If I'm in the mood. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready for the first dilemma? Look at you with your iPad. You look like you're on the right stuff. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not the right stuff anymore, was no, it? No, it's Jeremy Vine. Jeremy Vine with your iPad. Well, it's Jeremy Vine. It's Storm Huntley. It's Alexis Conran. Who isn't it on Channel you, 5? Why have you got an iPad? Oh, because, you know, there's no Planet B. You look like you're about to do... What's the corner on this morning called? The hub. the hub. They haven't done the hub for years. The hub. Do they not do the hub anymore? No, because they did the hub when Twitter sort of started and it was sort of fun and cool. And look what happened to that. Yeah. Anyway. Can we stop saying X, formerly Twitter as well? Let's just call it Twitter. Yeah, it's always going to be Twitter. Yeah. Anyway. Mm. This is from Michael. Dear William Jordan, Chairman Emeritus Stewart and RIP producer oh. Ben. RIP, which is, of course, relaxing in Panama. I have an Don't tell people where he is. 
we stuck on his story. Okay. I have an etiquette question for you. As I write this, I'm relaxing on a cruise ship and we are docked in St. Martin. And uh, Lucky Martin. <laughs> I've worked there. And we had a very odd potato peelerless tour guide this morning named Wendy, <laughs> who had lived in St. Martin for 30 years, but is originally British. She treated us with an utter level of contempt. Every question we asked was scoffed at, and there was one unfortunate moment when she encouraged us to laugh at a local man. Sounds oh. like she would like this chapter in the joke book. Yes. My father told her that this was unacceptable after three hours of holding his tongue. But I'd like to know, what is the etiquette for dealing with rude people in the service industry? Should we have just been British about it and bitten our tongues, even with such a level of disrespect being shown? Thank you in advance. Love your work. Michael. I mean, if it's something you've paid for, maybe go to their manager at the end and be yeah. like, this person was really rude and not very nice. And offensive. There's and a difference offensive. between rude and offensive. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like she was really offensive. Mm. Yeah. But I've said this before on this podcast, a great way, you just say to someone, sorry, could you just say that again? Yeah. And obviously, if they then repeat it, and potentially Michael's Wendy here probably would have repeated it and not seen it, then you can go, do you really mean that? Mm. Yeah. How would you have dealt with that if you was on a cruise? Have you ever been on a cruise? I've been on a crossing. So we didn't... Way. No. <laughs> well, I have done that. But we, uh, where we went from Southampton to New York, so you don't stop. That's a cruise. Well, it's not, because I'd say a cruise is where you port in this, and you get off and do That's all. a bloody cruise. Yeah, well, all right. Well, I went on a cruise ship. How long did that take to get to New York? Six nights. Wow, was it nice? It was all right. Was it a luxury one, or was it p &L? No offence, p &L. It was uh, the Queen Mary 2. Wow. Yeah. Fair. I've always wanted to go on a cruise, because I like the idea of it just being all-you-can-eat buffet. Did you have the full drinks package? I, c I don't know. Your mum did. I did, darling. <laughs> I was on the full drinks. That's where I learned how to fold napkins into shapes was on the Queen Mary 2. I was 17. Was you? Yeah. I've always wanted to go on a cruise. No, I was 16. I love the idea of just getting pissed and eating all day and not having to move. Maybe we'll go cruising. And go for a little excursion. An excursion. Well, that, you see, that I would like to do a cruise where you, where you dock and you get off and you look around the town and you get on the ship and then it moves again. I would quite like to do that to see if I would like that more because... You are on a ship for, and I hadn't watched Titanic at this point, so thank God I hadn't, but... You'd not, what, you were 17 and you'd not seen Titanic? Yes, you know, I only watched Titanic at the start of last year. Oh, yes, of course. I watched it course. on the phone in the gym in yeah. installments. <laughs> Can't believe that. No. Toby Fingy's in the ITV series of it, that was quite good. Toby Jones. Yes. In, yeah. Otherwise known as Mr. Bates. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, Michael, I would, it's unfortunate that happened. I would, if she's a tour guy, she probably has a... Uh, internet review page that you can review her services i wouldn't definitely wouldn't tip her most tour guides would expect a tip at the end i wouldn't tip her i would call her out on it um but yeah. if you don't like confrontation because michael we presumably you're british and we don't as a nation like confrontation then yeah go and tell her manager about it so you're not having to sort of um say something to her leave a bad review even though we just said leave us a nice one did you ever yeah. used to watch the cruise with jane mcdonald no oh it was so good my mum used to let me stay up for that did she yeah that's nice. Mm. What time was it on? Probably about eight, nine o'clock. Oh, sweet. On a clear day. That's what she used to sing. This is from Chloe from Northern Ireland. Northern Hi, Ireland. Hi, William and Jordan. I've just finished listening to the entire backlog during my work for the last couple of months, so I knew you were the right people to help with my query. I went on a first date and it was all going well, but when we went in for the kiss, our nose rings bashed together oh. and we ended up attached to each other's faces. Oh. Well, oh. Oh gonna happen if you get a nose ring i panicked initially but luckily we eventually got detached and laughed it off although i was terrified i might end up with a half ripped nose so my question is what is the etiquette when two people with nose rings kiss should we take them off yours sincerely chloe from northern iron you not put a plaster in it like in pe <laughs> like girls had to put plasters on there girls didn't have oh, nose rings you had to put a school. plaster on didn't you i bet your producer ben comes back with your nose ring Oh, yes. I'll bet you're a tenner right here right now. Him and Kat have been matching nose rings. Oh, I can't see him with a nose ring. Uh, really? He'll have a nose ring. It won't suit him. I mean, if he does, we will absolutely fall on the floor laughing. He'll I mean, have a nose honest. ring and he'll be vegan. No offence to any vegan. He's going to the wrong... No, but he's ending up in Argentina. That is not the country to be vegan. They love a steak over yeah. there, don't they? If anything, he's going to come back and he's going to be a carnivore. Mm. He's already half veggie, isn't he? Yeah. He doesn't eat meat at home. Anyway, uh, what is the etiquette? I, I I think a little plaster on your nose before you go out. It's not very sexy, that, though, is it? You could get the colourful ones that kids have. What, a Mr. Men one? A Band-Aid. 
Yes. Yeah. Um, or maybe you just kiss on the forehead. Or maybe you, you kiss. I know. I don't know. Block it. Block your nose. I think if uh, this goes further, one of you is going to have to take your piercing out or swap it to the other nostril. Yes, you have have the other one, or take it out and put a stud in. Or they might have the one that dangles there in the middle of the nose. I never know why people have them in them. I always think if they break down, they can sort of be towed. <laughs> like, why, what's the point of having like that? Like the laughing cow, don't they? Yes. Little, yeah. I, I, I've, I've never had a piercing. No. Have, have you? No. No. Of course I haven't. In the words of my late grandmother, William <laughs> Darling. If God had wanted us to have holes in our ears, he would have put them there. If God would have wanted us to have holes in our ears, he would have put them there. Is, did she not have any piercings? No, she wouldn't let my mother get her ears pierced. She wouldn't wear earrings? Uh, clip-ons. Clip-ons? Yes, I know. What, is she Pat Butcher? <laughs> <laughs> clip-ons? Yes. Oh, okay. No, she doesn't, doesn't believe, didn't believe in all of that. Did the aristocracy never wear earrings? Yeah, I think they get their ears pierced, yeah. Yeah, it's... Cute, now you see little babies with him, don't you? Let's go on to the next dilemma. This is from Yan. Watching you with this iPad is like watching me mum order something online on her iPad. It's stressful. It's like watching me dad with remote control. I'm sorry. What am I pressing here now? It's your glasses case, dad. Oh, fuck. Dear William and Jordan, I've been listening to your brilliant podcast for a couple of years and have not until now had anything to write to you about. I've just returned from my honeymoon where my husband and I spent four weeks visiting Japan. Oh. Konnichiwa. It was a fantastic trip. While we were there, it was khaki persimmon season, which is one of my favourite fruits. We bought a fair number of khakis while travelling around Japan and I gave them a nickname. For a whole week, I walked around different towns and cities in Japan asking my husband in public if he wanted a... Bukaki. Now, do you know what that is? I've heard about it. Oh, them. yes, he says. Is this, can you explain what a bukaki is? Is it bukaki? I think that's what, I, and to be fair, I actually don't know completely. I think it is. I'll Google it. I yes. Think I've, somebody tagged me in some of it. Did they? Yeah, about it. Let me have a look. I'm not Are sure you, they did. Oh, bukaki is a Japanese word which probably translates to splash with liquid. Yes, okay. Well, that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> what is a bukaki? Am I... What? It's not what I thought. That, right. How do you spell... Look on Urban Dictionary. Bukaki. How do... Bukaki. Why are we talking about this? Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, well, Can you just be sensitive when you read this? So I found it on Urban Dictionary. Bu... But is it bukaki? Yes. If you have children listening, Don't... or anyone easily offended, stop listening now. Oh, God. Skip forward 15 seconds. Oh, I didn't realise this is what it is. It's a relatively common porno fetish that includes one sperm recipient, usually... Recipient. <laughs> recipient, usually of the female variety and at least three or more sperm donor. Oh, the... the, the, the so a bukkake, a bukkake is when someone wanks on your face. I believe so. Wow. Good okay. To, good to know. Carry on. We're not doing that for an eschatomology, by the way. What's the origin of that? Anyway. What, a honeymoon? <laughs> Finally, we were on a hike in the middle of the forest and I pulled out a khaki from my bag and said, Bukaki? My husband half yelled, stop saying that. Usually mild-mannered, I thought his behaviour had gone too far. Something here was amiss. It was at this moment, while I looked at him questioningly, that my husband realised I had no idea what Bukaki meant. Once he sheepishly explained me the details, I was mortified. And see why. I'd like to say I have stopped referring to this delicious fruit as bukkake, but the truth is I can't. It just seems like a much more natural name. Do you think I should stop calling it bukkake, or do you think my innocent nickname of this delicious fruit is acceptable, Jan? Yeah, I, I absolutely do, Jan, think you should stop calling it bukkake, because as we've just found out, that means something totally different to... Yes, I didn't know that was the Japanese name for a persimmon. Mm. When... So... Yeah, my... Dad was meant to fist bump my mum once and he went, fist me. Yes. And it was <laughs> And he's never walked straight since. And it was very awkward. So let's not call it any no. uh, let's not call it fist. It's a fist bump. Do you like persimmons? Pardon? Do you like persimmon? What's persimmon? Khaki. Oh, is it, I've never heard of it. No. What is Maybe it? Maybe we should get you some persimmons. I don't know if they're I'm not very exotic when it comes to fruit. It's an apple banana, and if I'm feeling a bit out there, a peach. Oh. Or a pear. All oh, right, this is yeah, very, very okay. dull. Yeah. Losing the will to live. This last one is from Molly. Would you advise to stop saying bukkake? I would. Call us khaki is fine, but we have a perfectly good English word for it, which is persimmon. 
This is from Molly. Hello, William, Jordan and team. Hello, team. I'm a mother of two kids, which means my once swollen perky boobs have become sad, deflated balloons. After a few years of debating, I finally decided that I wanted to have a breast augmentation to rejuvenate my bust and help me feel confident in my body again. Good on you. There are some women at my gym and office with whom I am friendly and conversational, and I'm 99% sure that they have had work done. Wanting to get some real opinions from people I know, mm. I wasn't sure how to go about asking them for their experiences without possibly offending them. What is the etiquette of asking someone if they had had a boob job? Many thanks. Molly. This is a really good question. Can you ask people if they've had cosmetic surgery? No. Can you, you not? No. I think the way to do it is go, oh, I'm thinking of having a boob job. What do you think? Not sure if it's the right thing or ah, if it's painful. You are good. And then if they then say, oh, nothing to worry about. It's a bit sore for 24 hours, but after that it's fine. I don't know whether it is or not. If they then reveal, you can. Right. So don't assume. Just say, I'm thinking of having it. So, yeah. That's really good advice. Thank you. That is actually good advice. Because there's people I want to know, and I'm like, do you have Botox? But you mm. can tell when people get fillers and stuff. Would you, it, get, would you get lip fillers? No. Would you no, because I've got quite nice lips, I think, actually. Okay. Some people don't. There is, I won't say their name, but they're a actor who is in a film that's done quite well recently that everyone's talking about. And oh. there's a lot of speculation on TikTok as Does to it? whether they have had... Yeah. Oh. Stuff done. Do you think? And they've done like, this was him six years ago. This is him now. Oh. And then lips are part of that. Yeah. Would you get the bum one? The bum, what they call the big bum fillers? No. Would you not? No. Okay. Not having anything going in there. Disgusting. I, 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 yeah. Because there's some people that do have it and look great. And then there's others that go a bit too far, don't they? Shame, really. It is. Less is more. Less is more. Enhancements. Have you had Botox recently? Yes, I had last week. I can tell. Yeah. Well, well it hasn't quite kicked in yet. It takes about seven to 12 days. Can you feel it when it kicks in? Uh, I used to be able to, but now no. And w why is it you get it done? You've no frown lines at all, have you? Well, I do a bit. Have I got them? I'm not getting it. I, I'm going to grow old disgracefully. Yes, I know. You're doing a I, good job with that. I put... Teeth isn't classed as cosmetic surgery, is it? It is. It's cosmetic. Is it? It's not surgery, but I'd say it's a cosmetic enhancement. Okay. You're changing what God gave you. Well, no, I just had... Not where I would have started I just either. had really bad teeth. You didn't. I've seen some... I've seen a video recently, I mean, in the castle. God. I look like a pirate. Like looking at a piano keyboard. It was. It, it yeah. was. Yeah. Yeah. Bless you. Um, but no, Molly, in answer to your question... You talk about yours. If they offer, great, but you cannot directly ask someone. Has Mikey had any cosmetic surgery? No. He, I, I hope I can say this. He was going to go and have Botox. And it was on the day, it was on the 8th of September 2022. And what happened on that day? It's when the Queen died. And he was going, his appointment was at uh, 7 o'clock. PM? Yes. And he was about to leave the house. And at 6.30 p.m. they announced. And he was like, I can't go home. Because we were, we were very upset, obviously. So he phoned the Botox and said, I can't come. The Queen's died. And I don't think that person knew at that point. But he was... That he, is so uh, dramatic. And they didn't know what to do because there was a 24-hour cancellation policy. Um, and they're a bit like, uh, okay, fine. That is so dramatic. Yeah. So he basically cancelled his Botox because the Queen died. Yes. So he hasn't had it since. Right. Oh, back lasered. Is that cosmetic? Ish, yeah. I've got one more left. Have it's you? really starting Can to you show hurt. me your back later? I'll show you my back, yeah. Yeah. It's really, like the last one was painful. Really? They get, they're meant to get less painful. I was because Alex, self shoot Alex, is also mm. getting it done. So we often text each other and he's, he's, he's just had his last one, but he might need another top up one. Well, Sorry, sure Alex. I hope, that I hope you don't mind me that. sharing that. <laughs> so I'm, I've got like, oh, it's so painful at the moment. You have to put after sun on it. Yes, you do. You've got to be very careful. I take something to... I take... A, something to bite down on. Bite down on. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's lovely. There we go. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Thank right. you very much uh, for that. We're, we're, we're back on Friday, aren't we? Yes, With we are for our, our weekend release. Weekend release. And uh, we carry on our chat about the smell of sex. Yeah, and we've had a big reaction on social media. 
And we hear from a Gene Diva who has made a very smart purchase for their wrapping needs. Oh, I wonder what that is. Oh, good God. Remember, you can DM us. We're Sexted My Boss on the socials. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexmyboss.com. Or you can write to this man here, Mr. William Hansen, who, in the fullness of time, promises a handwritten reply in one of our luxury greeting cards with executive self-seal envelopes. The address is on the website, sextedmyboss.com. See you on Friday. See you on Friday. (laughs) 